was Republican Senator from Alaska, Dan Sullivan, who, along with Senator Tim Kaine, introduced that bipartisan resolution on Taiwan. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Kristen, and Happy New Year from beautiful Alaska. Happy New Year to you. I do want to get to the elections in Taiwan. But first, I want to ask you, of course, about the news that we have been talking about. President Biden ordering those airstrikes against Iran-backed Houthi targets in Yemen. What was your reaction to learning that? Do you think that it went far enough? No, I don't think it went far enough. I've been encouraging the Biden administration for weeks to take much more aggressive actions. So I supported the strikes, but they were long overdue. But, you know, the previous segment you just had on really gets to the heart of the matter, and that's the broader appeasement strategies that the Biden administration has undertaken with regard to Iran. They reversed a number of initiatives that the Trump administration had put forward. And I've actually talked to the president and Jake Sullivan directly about, hey, reestablishing deterrence with regard to Iran and in particular reimposing things like sanctions against their oil and gas sector, sanctions against their ballistic missile sector. So this is something I think is going to take a long time to reestablish deterrence. And we could also start with the Houthis. I've pressed Secretary Blinken. You know, they removed them from the list of uh, organizations that sponsor terrorism. I've pressed the Secretary of State for the last year and a half. Hey, put the Houthis back on that list. They're trying to kill Americans, for goodness sake. So there's a lot more we can do uh, that our government should be doing. But this was an important step. It was overdue, but I supported it. You're calling it appeasement. The Biden administration would undoubtedly take issue with that word. They would argue they are trying to get the Iran nuclear deal back on track. You are calling for tougher measures, though, and I wonder if you can be specific. What would those measures look like? For example, your colleague, Senator Lindsey Graham, is arguing that the U.S. should make strikes against the IRCG inside Iran. Is that something that you would support? Is that the type of tougher action that you're calling for? <clears throat> Yes, but let me just back up again, because I do think it's important, the context. During the Trump administration, yes, we pulled out of the JCPOA, uh, although we launched, the Trump administration launched a historic peace initiative. We reestablished deterrence by killing Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force, and we initiated very broad-based sanctions against their oil and gas sector. By the end of the Trump administration, the Iranians had about $4 billion dollars in foreign reserves. That's actually not a lot. Now they have about $70 billion in foreign reserves that enables them to fund their terrorist proxies, whether it's the Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah. So I think reestablishing deterrence talks about, well, I would certainly support what Lindsey Graham's talking about on the kinetic side. But like I said, I had a pretty long discussion with Jake Sullivan and the president saying you would have bipartisan support to reestablish very strong sanctions against the Iranian oil and gas regime, which is a huge source of their power. And you may have seen, Kristen, just a few weeks ago, the U.N. sanctions against the Iranian ballistic missile sector uh, expired. We should be pressing that again. These aren't that difficult. You would have Republican and Democratic senators uh, supporting those kind of much more aggressive actions against Iran. And, of course, independent inspectors have determined that Iran is now closer to developing a nuclear weapon. But let me ask you, do you think that this is becoming a wider war, Senator? How concerned are you about that? Well, I'm concerned about it, and I think everybody is concerned about it. But I think the way in which you avoid a wider war is to show much more toughness with regard to Iranian proxies. I don't think Iran wants a, a broader war. And the key is, whether it's Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, or the Houthis, when they're taking action, particularly action, Kristen, and they've been doing this a lot just in the last few weeks, to kill American service members, that's where we need to draw the line. What happened with regard to um, uh, deterrence previously was that the Iranians thought uh, through the Quds Force that they could kill Americans with impunity. You might remember the Soleimani and the Quds Force 
ended up killing and wounding over 2,000 American service members in Iraq through Iraqi Shia militias. That had to stop, and that's why I strongly supported and encouraged President Trump to kill the leader of the Quds Force, Soleimani. We certainly reestablished deterrence back then, and what I worry is that, that deterrence has now unraveled. It's difficult to reestablish deterrence, but if the president took much stronger by, uh, actions against the Iranians, kinetic and non-kinetic like sanctions, he would get support from both Democrat and Republican senators. I'm sure of that. Let me turn to Taiwan, Senator, and just ask you yep. for your perspective about the elections there. Obviously, we are watching it closely here. For folks who are sitting at home wondering why Americans should care about this election, what is the answer and how concerned are you that the results of the election could further provoke China? Well, I think it's already provoking the Chinese Communist Party and Xi Jinping, and that is the concern. So the elections, as you mentioned, Kristen, are actually tomorrow. That will be the eighth presidential election uh, that, the China, that the Taiwanese have had. So very important, the uh, inauguration of whoever the new president is isn't until May. So we are likely going to see a very volatile and possibly even dangerous period in the Taiwan Strait. So what we need to be doing, and I think it's starting to happen, is our government needs to show strong support and resolve for Taiwanese democracy, and we need to um, enhance deterrence in the Taiwan Strait. You mentioned the resolution that we passed in the Senate yesterday. We had 50 co-sponsors on that resolution, Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives, and then it passed unanimously in the Senate yesterday. That's good news. That's the United States Senate showing uh, not only the people of Taiwan, but the Chinese Communist Party and Xi Jinping. We support Taiwan democracy, and I think that's enormously important for our own national security interests, but to help the courageous people of Taiwan. Senator, let me ask you about the race for the White House. Obviously, I am here in Iowa where former President Trump, according to the polls, has a very strong lead. We'll have to wait and see what happens on Monday. An increasing number of your colleagues are now endorsing the former president, including Senator Barrasso. Do you plan to endorse Mr. Trump? Well, what I've said is I plan to endorse the Republican nominee, and I think President Trump is looking quite strong in that regard. And look, I think one of the most important things we can be doing right now is just um, comparing the policies of the Trump administration with the Biden administration. You know, Kristen, we've been talking about a very dangerous world. Think about what's happened under the Biden administration, an invasion of Ukraine, uh, a horrible, atrocious invasion of Israel, certainly uh, supported by the Iranian terrorist regime, huge tensions in the, China, uh, in the Taiwan Strait, as we just talked about. And I think a lot of that has been, you know, driven by the Biden administration's weakness. The president is cutting our military every year. This year's uh, Department of Defense budget Senator. shrinks the Army, shrinks the Navy, shrinks the Marine Corps. Uh, in terms of energy policies, we've unilaterally well, surrendered that Senator, strength. I, I, so to Senator, me, let, well, me just, so, let me just stop you there, because Republicans are calling sure. for budget cuts that would presumably impact defense spending in the military as well. Would it not? Well, during the uh, I'll tell you this. The second term of the Obama administration cut defense spending by almost 25 percent. It was actually one of the big reasons I ran for the U.S. Senate as a Marine Corps uh, officer myself. But, and during the Trump administration Senator, with the Republican I, I, Senate, we significantly, well, this is an important point, Chris, and we significantly increased defense spending and readiness. And I think that is such an important issue right now. By the way, a lot of Democrats support that. President Biden has put forward three years in a row, uh, his budget cuts defense spending while significantly increasing all the other federal agencies. This is a huge policy issue but where there's disagreement. I think uh, President Trump and other Republicans have strong disagreement with President Biden on this. Senator, but at the same time, just in terms of what's happening right now, you have Republicans, particularly in the House, who are calling for budget cuts that would inevitably impact defense spending. But let, let me ask you about former President Trump. Of course, when you talk about his foreign policy, 
he has called for pulling back from NATO. But I want to ask you about some of the headlines this week. He was before a D.C. appeals court. His lawyers argued that a president would be immune from prosecution even if he ordered the assassination of a political rival by SEAL Team 6 unless he was impeached and convicted by the Senate. You, of course, voted to acquit former President Trump twice. Do you agree with this interpretation of presidential immunity? Is he above the law? Well, look, I have not seen uh, the details of the presidential immunity lawsuit, um, so I'm not going to comment on that. But what I do think is that well, all of these lawsuits... Well, I just read it to you, um, though. I just read it to you. Do and, you think he's above the law? Well, I mean, again, I, 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 I do... Uh, I don't think anyone's above the law, but I do a lot more uh, due diligence before I answer questions on a topic of that importance, not just listening from, uh, you know, reading it from, from a uh, news reporter. But let me make a broader point here, and I think it's an important one. All of these actions by different prosecutors, whether in Georgia or a couple in New York, um, you know, I think that what they're doing is they're only strengthening President Trump's support in the Republican Party. The people should be the ones choosing the next president, not, you know, liberal prosecutors in New York. Uh, and I think that that's becoming a, a broader issue in these um, elections that are coming up. They're certainly becoming a broader issue with regard to what's happening in the Republican primaries. And of course, the indictments, the federal indictments that he is facing were brought by an independent special counsel. Senator, I thank you for your time today. I have to say, we did a fact check. It is colder here in Iowa than it is in Alaska today. <laughs> so we thank you very much for joining well, us on I this hear very you guys might chilly be, I Friday. Hear you guys the might be getting, <laughs> I, I hear you might be getting a big storm there. So, so hang in there, but it's always great to have beautiful snowy weather. Certainly we love it in Alaska. Uh, we, well, we're enjoying it here. Thank you so much, Senator. Appreciate your time.